Neil Surtees is my name and um, I build boats, or well, I did build boats. These days I kind of build cars and whatever comes along. Um, well at the moment you guys are standing in my workshop, which is my playroom pretty much. Uh, I venture out here most days and uh, rip into a bit of welding and cutting and building of things. Usually I finish a project and before I've finished it I'm pretty much thinking about the next one and into it. But uh, it sort of keeps me out of trouble and gives me an interest. Years ago, um, I brought, brought a, a property next door there that had a shed on it and it had a little house on it and the um, house I probably wouldn't let my dog stay in there, it was pretty, pretty ratchet so we just kind of stayed in the shed there for a while and then I built boats, I was just a one man band and every oh, nine days I could pop a 6-1 out. As things progressed then I employed someone and built another boat and then I got into the 5-5s five and then I was doing one a week and then I employed someone then it was two a week and it was just out of control so then I just started employing people and, um, and that's how it all kind of started really. It was, I suppose if they were shit boats I'd still be working for the man but they're obviously good boats and that's why I am where I am today. Well, I'm a time-served boilermaker by trade. Um, back in the day, nobody had any money, and I got into jet boats. My guy wanted me to build him an aluminium racing jet boat, which was my first aluminium boat. So I built it, it went very well, and then I got into the aluminium side of things. As things progressed, I wanted a fishing boat. So I went out and got brochures of all the other boats on the market, to find out how long they are, to how wide they are, what kind of V they run how high the sides are, just all your basic measurements. Set about building a jig, and it was completely different to everything else out there. And I was talking to a guy one time, and he suggested water ballast. And I said, oh yeah, good idea, might give it a whirl, you know. And so I gave it a whirl, and then by doing that, it allowed me to run a bit more V in my boats, which gives you the smooth ride. And so it sort of just all kind of happened really and then so I, I built a 6.1, um, put it in the water and it was uh, very good. And um, so then people obviously got wind of it, took people for rides and then started taking orders pretty much. It was crazy but a lot of work. I like working with aluminium because it's quick, uh, it cuts relatively easy, it welds relatively easy sort of clean as opposed to black steel yeah you can make some pretty cool things out of it and back in the day I used to skill saw them all out on the ground with a skill saw and all that kind of thing very labor intensive um, these days it's relatively easy to build a boat because you can get a computer program and you basically build a boat on the computer push a button send it to another machine cuts it out and it all kind of falls together quite nicely but back when I started everything was like you'd build a jig and you'd make patterns and every time you built a boat the patterns would come out and trace around them. And so things have progressed um, a long way but it's, there's a lot more boat builders out there because of the computer. If it wasn't for the computer uh, there'd be less of them. Yeah. All my boats have always had welded floors, um, fully welded construction. Under the floors it's a bit like an aeroplane wing. It's not the thickness of material that makes my boat strong, it's what's inside the boat. And um, that's what it's always, that's... When I build a boat, I never see it again, basically, because it doesn't break. The only time it comes back is for a service or to get something added to it. But we got it like a 10 year warranty, and honest, we don't fix broken boats. Um, but that, that gets back to the way they're made. But back in the day, a lot of boats were breaking, and I'll, big reason for that was wooden floors and which which gives the boat no structural strength so I was going to boat shows and I had a model of a boat with an aluminium floor and a boat with a wooden floor and you could grab grab this model and twist it and you couldn't twist my boats but you could twist these other boats and so it really got up manufacturers noses that were building cheap boats with wooden floors so anyway a couple of years goes by and then they've got aluminium floors that are pop riveted in and sealed around the edge and all this sort of stuff but come a bit further this way and then now now boats pretty much all have aluminium floors and 
it's for a reason, you know what I mean? It um, makes the boat last longer and it makes the boat stronger. And then, then they tend not to break. But um, yeah, so I just kind of went about curing things that have been going on for a long time, I suppose you could say. And um, but like I say, once it once it goes out the gate, I know it's not going to break. And that's that's what I'm all about. I sort of got going back in '93 as a one-man band, and then started employing people. Um, and I believe we've got something like 60 staff down there now. Um, so it's a big monster. <laughs> a lot of mouths to feed. Uh, but they all seem to be doing their job well and um, getting on with it, it's good. I think 30's customers are people that have done their homework. Um, they know the product. They probably know somebody with a 30's boat and I believe every boat will sell a boat. Once you've been in one and you go in other boats, you will know why they perform the way they do. But um, very soft riding and then the water ballast at rest just turns them into a stable platform. Yeah, well, we used to sell boats to these couple of Aussies, the Clelands, and um, then it's sort of like they stopped buying our boats and then we found out that they had set a factory up and were building boats, direct copy to my boats. And all their early advertising and magazines and everything that got them off the ground were all my boats. So obviously I'm not friends with them anymore. <laughs> and um, they've built a pretty wicked business, but with my design. And I got nothing out of it. They're a thorn in the outside, you could say. But we're still there in the marketplace, as you know. But the original, um, yeah, I started all that off. So I'm a very practical person, and not many people are. So to me, a boat is a workspace. So everything has to have a place, um, and it's just got to be functional. And that's why my top sides are so wide. It's like, uh, if I wasn't practical, I'd probably build a boat like everybody else following what someone did a hundred years ago but because I'm not one to do what everyone else does I kind of go off and do it my own way and it'll either work or it won't work and in this case it did work so I got lucky <laughs>